Are you stuck knowing which colour pencils you need for drawing wildlife and pet portraits? Well today I'm sharing with you my top colours which are absolutely essential to any coloured pencil wildlife artist toolkit. I also talk a little bit more about colour theory and the choice of some colours so keep watching until the end. Most of the pencils I'm showing you today are from the Faber-Castell Polychromos range, but I've also selected one or two Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils and a Caran d'Ache Pablo as well, and also a sneaky little Prisma colour. All of the colours mentioned are listed in the description below for you if you fancy checking them out. I much prefer buying my pencils open stock these days as I find that buying a set, especially as a wildlife artist, comes with a lot of unnecessary colours that you often don't use, at least as not as much as you use the more sort of neutral tones. So buying open stock and just selecting the colours you need for your purpose, I think, is a much more cost effective way to begin building your collection. The colours I've selected for this list are ones which I am constantly using. They're always hanging out in my Derwent pencil buddy and through looking at my colour swatch lists for each of my pieces, these ones crop up most often so it's safe to say that they are pretty much an essential. Let's start with the full list and I'll explain my reasoning behind some of the colour choices afterwards. This list is pretty solid for any type of fur that you may encounter as well as some feathers too. To start off with, we have the polychromos colours. We have ivory, dark naples ochre, manganese violet, sky blue, dark indigo, chromium green opaque, earth green, caput mortem violet, light flesh, burnt ochre, raw umber, beaster, Nougat, Burnt Sienna, Walnut Brown, Warm Grey 3, Warm Grey 1, Cold Grey 1, Cold Grey 5, and finally Dark Sepia. Next I've selected two white pencils, the Caran d'Ache Pablo and the Prismacolor White. I've selected two here because sometimes I like to work on a creamier, smooth texture like that of feathers and that's when I'd use the Prismacolor for blending and burnishing. Whereas the Pablo White I tend to use for subtle blending and smoothing of colour shifts and that kind of thing for fur as the lay down isn't as waxy or creamy so you get that kind of paper texture showing through still which is perfect for fur work. Finally, I have three Caran d'Ache Luminance colours, which are Sepia 10%, Brown Ochre 10%, and Apricot. The neutral browns and greys might be pretty obvious as to why I've picked them, but you might be wondering about those purples and greens, and possibly even the blues too. When would you need a purple pencil when creating fur, Amy? That's madness. Well, if you've watched any of my videos before, especially the fur ones, you will know how much I love using two thirds of a triad of colours to create a really vibrant effect, or even using complementary colours to produce a really unique shadow value. So let me explain that purple. This is one which I use underneath black fur as an undertone, along with blue to create some really nice values and to add shine to the fur. I also use this for brown fur to help really push the orange tones and create a vibrant effect. Orange and purple are part of a triad of colours along with green and together they produce super bright colourful pieces. I also use purple in my white fur tones in the shadows along with a bunch of other colours to really capture the light. I think of white fur kind of like white light containing all the colours and then I add those to the white fur and it helps to convey that white appearance. Purple is also used in a lot of noses, tongues and for the insides of ears, not necessarily just fur, which are all crucial elements of animal portraiture. What about the greens? Well, these are used in the same way as the purple. These are mainly used for shadows in white fur and also for orange and brown fur too. I found that adding the chromium green opaque in particular on top of raw umber or beaster and mixed with a little bit of dark sepia can create some super nice realistic shadows and often look much better than having gone straight in with a dark grey colour. 
greens can also be mixed with red tones to create shadows as the two colours cancel each other out and produce an almost kind of grey scale effect. So it's like using a grey, only your colour won't look muddy, which is super smart. I always add a shading of green down to my yellow or tan coloured animals as well, as the green kind of helps to complement and lift the yellow tones. The blues I've selected here are mainly used for highlighting and shadowing, the dark indigo playing a particularly crucial role. You'll notice I haven't picked out a black in this coloured pencil list, and that's because I much prefer mixing my own by combining the dark indigo and the dark sepia. And together, the two create a real deep, dark tone that adds a lot more warmth to darker animals than a straight black pencil could. The sky blue I use for highlighting white and black fur and it's also a good element to add into noses and eye highlights. This helps create that kind of shine effect and helps make textures appear wet, which is crucial for eyes and noses as you know. This colour also pairs well with orange to create some luminous looking shadows. The rest of the colours are pretty self-explanatory, they're all just kind of neutral tones, they're browns, they're yellows, you've got some ivory there which you'd use for base layers along with a warm grey one and a cold grey one, so you've got some really essential brown tones and not the brown tones just aren't necessarily used for like a giraffe or a lion or anything that has kind of brown feathers you can use them for shadows as well and I think I've got a real good mix of colors here that will absolutely help you with any kind of color of fur and not just fur but all of the other elements that pertains to wildlife as well so beaks mouths teeth ears all of that kind of stuff everything is covered with this palette this list also compiles a selection of warm and cool tones so it's a good base palette for undertaking any kind of wildlife or pet project. Got a cool toned black dog to draw? Easy. Just mix the cold greys, dark sepia, blues and a little purple and you've got the perfect palette for a gorgeous doe-eyed black Labrador. Maybe you've got a handsome lion you're drawing like me at the moment? Then pick up all those browns, the yellows and the orange tones and accent the shadows with the Caput Morton Violet and the Chromium Green Opaque. Maybe even throw in a little sky blue as well to help create that luminous orange effect. In total, this custom palette would set you back around £45 from Jackson's Art Supplies minus the Prismacolor. That you can find on the coloured pencil shop, I'll leave the link in the description, for £1.70. A standard set of 24 Faber-Castell polychromos will set you back retail around $49.95 and would include some colours you really wouldn't use often, so building your own palette like this is much, much more cost effective. If you want to build your own palette right away, click the Jackson's Art Supplies link below and if it's your first time shopping with them, you get 10% off your order, which is even more of a bargain. So if you fancy getting your own palette using these exact colours, click the link and go and have a little shop. If you've made it this far into the video, then you are one devoted coloured pencil fan. I do plan on making a full colour theory video and maybe releasing a short series to help you better understand colour and the reason behind why you pair some colours with other colours and all that jazz so let me know if that's something that you would like to see by leaving an arty emoji in the comments below so a pencil, a palette, leave them below. I really hope that you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up if you did and I hope you now have some colour inspiration for use within your own coloured pencil animal work. If you're new here and you want to see more of my coloured pencil content then hit that sub button and don't forget to click that bell as well so you never miss an upload. And speaking of uploads, I release new videos every single Friday for you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!